Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi. This is a new season. Guess who's back, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? A much respected social action researcher. I start that way so that we we will connect all these dots when we are when we are asking all the questions. Among the top six women featurists in Africa, worked um, in Kenya, worked in uh, with various other countries such as Uganda, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, and Ghana in, in, in mapping development, in mapping humanitarian activities. Her work, especially on youth realities, began putting her to the map um, sort of like almost two decades ago and has continued to do so. Um, she has a wonderful story um, about her life, about her career, about her journey, and uh, what it looks like to be a professional in the development in uh, in the de development industry in the de in the development field and and um, the fact that we are doing this again is is an honor is a blessing thank you that you could create time and we could recreate <laughs> what we even uh, are done that time so Katin DCV Daktari yeah. welcome on set Asante Sana thanks for having me and a happy birthday. Ah, <laughs> yes, today I turn a year older, but it's your story, so yes. we shall skid through that. Thank right. you so much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I turned the big four one today, and, and, and that you could even spend uh, my birthday with you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's a good thing. So, um, thank you. Coming back. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. It will go very well. It will go very well. We've, yeah. we've, we've, we've done what we need to do this time around. We mm -hmm. want to start again with your, with, with where this story begins and why this story is called, why mm -hmm. this story is important. It's, mm -hmm. it's important because it takes us back to the mm -hmm. roots, back yeah. to the very origins of, yeah. of, 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 uh, of Katindi. Take us, take us there. All right. Yes. <clears throat> so, well, I grew up in Nairobi mm -hmm. and uh, we were born in Karyobangi yes. North. That's where we grew up. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother was a secretary yeah. and worked in the city council. Yes. I think for 40 something years or right. thereabout before she retired. Yeah. And my dad was a chef uh -huh. at um, Intercontinental Hotel for the longest time. Ah, nice. So it was, uh, we were those kids. Although, um, chefing wasn't a thing those days. But intercon so, was a thing. So intercon was a thing. Intercon exactly. is not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I have three brothers. I'm yeah. an only girl, and I'm, I'm the firstborn. Ah, so, the one who's uh, <laughs> keeping them uh, on their toes. In the straight eh? and the narrow. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's me, is, really. Is there a huge gap between yourself and them? No. Mm -hmm. My brother and I, I think, are ten months apart. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. and our follower is uh, three years, no, two years after, after the second that. born. All right. Then the last born is five years. Yeah. Yeah. A apart bit, from the third born. A little bit more about your family. So you mm -hmm. say you're born in Karyubangi. It's which which, which Karyubangi? The north. Karyubangi North. What they call Bangla? With Bangla, uh -huh. which borders, of course, Dandora, Madare, Korogosho. Yeah. Um. Yes, and yeah. it's 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 well, but to be honest, it was a very nice, you know, low cost housing yeah. area in the eighties when was we were it, growing up. So just the, the picture we have now, mm -hmm. Bangla, mm -hmm. um, is 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 not. I mean, yes, you 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 said it. It neighbors those. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the um, um, informal settlements. Yeah. But it's what what was it? Was it an apartment or was it a flat? No, 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 no. Mm. It was uh, bungalows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because they were for the city council, they were mm -hmm. quite good housing. Uh, Although the, the thing I realized about those houses is that they were built with a colonial mindset. Mm -hmm. So I was just reflecting about that. Uh, and I realized mm -hmm. that, so the smaller houses had two occupants mm -hmm. and it was, it was built for two men to live in so that uh, they had like metal coat hangers protruding from the wall. Uh, and they shared the house and the, of course, the, the, bathrooms, the bathrooms and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was outside. Huh. So it was very interesting. Huh. But for us, we lived in the estate officer's house. Oh, okay, Yes. And okay. so it was a two-bedroom house. We were paying like 300 shillings. So courtesy of the, your mom's work. I would imagine mm, so. Mm. But it was, you know, quite big, quite mm, huge. With mm, a huge compound, could mm, pack like three cars, although mm, we didn't have any cars mm, then. Mm. And so it was very comfortable, the, okay. good, yeah, 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 low cost housing. Yeah, uh, but it's just that the neighborhood yeah. wasn't you. You see the ideal. Yeah, 
and so the vices of the neighborhood mm. were easily mm. influential for kids growing up mm. and yeah but we we really enjoyed i mean like yeah. any kid growing up going yeah. to a city council house yeah so our first i mean city council school so mm. our first um point of call mm -hmm. if i remember correctly was karibanki primary school mm -hmm. so i went there until i think i was in class two mm -hmm. and then my dad mm. invested in me mm. or in us going to a private school mm. so we crossed the road mm. into faith homes of kenya mm -hmm. they had a school there called sunflower primary right and so that's where i went to school mm. until i was 10 mm -hmm. but of course i was a very outgoing child right and so you know everything mm. <laughs> you know those days we would play kati bano yes and um i think because of the proximity to those vices yeah it was very easy for children to be influenced and yeah. my parents feared yeah that that would be it wouldn't be long yeah. before you know we catch those vices yeah and so they made a decision yeah. for us to be able to go to uh, to boarding so yeah. i went to boarding when i was 10. you or all of you all of us yeah but it started with, with me obviously as the first yes, born. yeah as the first born. yeah and so it was very interesting because you know um based on the life so the, of course i've grown up in a urban setting yeah and then i'm transferred to a rural yeah primary school oh so the boarding was in a rural setting. yeah it yeah. was in embu yeah and and even before you move to Embu, yeah, perhaps yeah. this when you say you're being predisposed to vices and, yeah. and, and stuff, mm -hmm. what 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 just take a show us what yeah. what what kind of what kind of vices what mm -hmm. what's that life you know like um, what's that life like yeah and then the what's that life like is the first question and then mm -hmm. the second question the second part of that question is mm -hmm. um, you guys are a little quote unquote affluent yes but then that's the neighborhood yeah so uh, is there any stereotyping yes that is coming with that and then how are you deal how are you all dealing with that all right so we were not the richest cousins for mm -hmm. example all right so uh by the fact that you're living in eastland mm -hmm. you you have you know i mean weren't the poorest cousins but yeah. weren't the richest cousins right. and so i recognize that maybe there was a gap there mm -hmm. but we didn't feel it because um there wasn't any reason to mm. we had all the provisions we needed mm. Mm. and and so there wasn't any complex about it because okay. to be honest the neighborhood was absolutely amazing mm -hmm. in at, at, in those days it was clean you yes. know you had all the amenities taken care of yeah by the city council like yeah. garbage collection sure. and stuff like that the population yeah. wasn't ma as much yeah so it wasn't really overpopulated mm -hmm. the thing um about the vices though is mm. that you know a typical slum life mm -hmm. is um so you have like drunkards mm -hmm. <laughs> passing right in front of your house mm -hmm. from madare to mm. korogosho or mm. from Obaka. korogosho to mm. to madare mm. and so um obviously mm. if you think about gangs in those days mm -hmm. Um, most of them would be traced mm. to those slum areas mm -hmm. and so if there was a shootout mm. it was it was very visible mm. and so that proximity mm. you know and then of course the kids you go to school with mm. also come from those neighborhoods mm -hmm. and so there are many things that uh, these are your friends mm. so sometimes for example you would uh, my brothers mm -hmm. would um, at some point they were in huru primary school mm -hmm. and so they would be given bus fare mm. to take the kenya bus mm -hmm. it was just one shilling yeah but they would opt to go through the pipeline yeah to cross the river oh dear and go to the other side uh, to uhuru Ooh. and that and was that pretty is, it's very thin it's, and it's very it was dangerous. pretty dangerous yeah, yeah so you see things and they're doing that so that they can walk with their friends yeah you see and yeah. so it's only a matter of time before yeah. you end up in yeah. we doing call a few it, things. Now we call it, I think the word I hear guys calling it is Kua Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so for myself, mm. for example, um, I remember, I don't know whether I was in class, maybe two. Mm. And my grandmother brought um, guavas. Mm -hmm. And I I told my friends about it. So we, we didn't, I didn't have money to buy mm. um, the seasonal foods. Mm um at the school compound and so i said oh but my grandmother brought and so everyone is like okay bring for us at lunch time but mm. my mom had said we, do, we shouldn't touch them mm. so you see i mean um based on that influence mm. i began to pick mm. so i stole mm. and obviously my mom got wind of it and mm. it wasn't a pretty sight <laughs> let me just say and mm. everyone who grew up in the 80s know what would happen to mm. us mm. when our parents would discipline us mm. so i mean and and you know i didn't even stop mm. even after that thorough beating i didn't stop mm. so i would watch like um you know jeshila wakovu mm -hmm. 
Salvation, Salvation Army. Army. Mm. I don't know why I always mm. forget that. Mm. So Salvation Army, mm. they would march around mm -hmm. uh, different estates mm -hmm. with their wonderful uniform. And band. But they always mm. had this team that had a cut on top mm. for donations. Mm. And I figured out, ah, I could start a bank, mm. you see. And so I went and took a tin and made the mm. bank. Mm. And then I started stealing from my mom. You see, and, and, and so those small habits... Mm tell you that i mean it's just yeah. a matter of time before yeah. it grows into something bigger yeah. the, so i think my parents the old adage, yeah. <laughs> yes. you know bad company corrupts good morals exactly yeah so my parents felt um we needed they needed mm. to do something different mm. a change and that's why yes i was taken to boarding school all right